Welcome to Moab, Utah for this episode of Prophets Resurrection Land Cruisers TV, which is going to showcase this 79 series Land Cruiser for the purposes of a bring a trailer auction. So let's check out all the features that this truck has to offer right now. So this vehicle exists because of the Cummins R2.8 turbo diesel program, the repower program they call it, and we were part of the beta test uh, for that engine and we wanted to build a truck that was really, really cool to showcase and to test out the new R2.8. So out of the warehouse came a 79 series Land Cruiser body and a lot of other parts to go along with it. This vehicle is completely custom built on an 80 series chassis that's been stretched and modified to accommodate the 79 series Land Cruiser body, which is pretty much the only way to get one here that's newer than 25 years old looking and drive it around on the road legally. 79 series Land Cruisers like this were never sold in the United States. Lots of other markets were lucky enough to get them. So if you want one here, you gotta custom make one yourself and that's what we did. This Land Cruiser has been to SEMA twice, first in 2017 where it was featured in the Cummins booth and then again in 2018 with Maxxis tires. In 2018, we entered it into the contest Battle of the Builders, which is touted as one of the most exclusive car shows in the world. It placed in the top 12 of Battle of the Builders and you can see it on the Motor Trend Network with the SEMA Battle of the Builders show. This pickup was completely hand built and restored at our shop. We started with a 1993 80 series chassis and a pair of 80 series axles with factory locking differentials. The chassis and axles were completely restored and rebuilt and then modified for the sheet metal on top. This vehicle was originally white and so you can see we've changed the color to beautiful freeborn red. The entire refinish was done with the vehicle in pieces and every fastener, clip, nut, bolt and spring has been hand refinished to give the truck a brand new look. So under the custom chassis is a mostly original Toyota equipment 80 series suspension system which utilizes a three link front suspension with a live axle and a sway bar and in the rear a five link suspension also with a sway bar. The sway bars help with on road and off road handling with all the extra gear on top. Also under the vehicle are two custom made fuel cells that hold together about 60 gallons of fuel and because of the economy of this engine and the size of the fuel capacity we've got about a 1500 mile effective range of driving. An old man emu two and a half inch lift with Bilstein shocks lifts the vehicle just enough for a set of 285 70R17 Maxxis Razor MTs. It's about a 33 inch tire. On top of the Land Cruiser sits an ARB roof rack and a pair of Zargaze boxes, great for storing your overland gear. And there's a pretty extensive overland gear setup on the back and the rack for that equipment is removable with just four bolts. So you could go from overland ready to just use it around town in just a few minutes. On the front of the vehicle sits an ARB bull bar that's for a 70 series pickup modified to fit the 80 series frame. And there's a rigid light bar and a worn 8,000 pound winch tucked in there. A couple of other custom pieces of fabrication on this Land Cruiser are the rear bumper and the rock sliders. The rear bumper sports some rigid backup lights and an integrated tow hitch as well as two recovery points on the back. And that bumper wraps around nicely on the sides to protect the body. So I told you that this truck exists because of the Cummins 2.8, so let's check it out. This engine is the only crate diesel engine option available and thank you Cummins for making it for us. It's very popular and there's a lot of reasons why. This vehicle is a blast to drive on and off road and it's got plenty of power to motivate this nearly 6,000 pound vehicle around very well. This engine compartment was laid out to look as OEM as possible and I think we accomplished that pretty nicely because I've had an awful lot of people wonder when Cummins started putting their diesels in Toyotas, which wasn't the case obviously. Um, under the hood we've got a custom cooling system it includes an aluminum radiator and electric fans and a charge air intercooler in front of that. The engine compartment also sports the ARB dual compressor 
which isn't really necessary for lockers because we've got factory electric lockers, but it's awfully nice to be able to air up the tires or blow up an air mattress when you're camping. We've got both the Cummins fuel filter and oil filter mounted nicely in places that make them easy to change. Air is supplied to the engine through the factory 79 series snorkel and then the factory air cleaner assembly that's been modified to work with the Cummins intake. There is a handy battery disconnect switch which will prevent the battery from dying in long periods of storage and also adds as a anti-theft device. During SEMA 2017, a couple of industry professionals called the installation of this engine above OE quality, which is quite a pat on the back. Under the hood, we've got a rigid A-series light on a mercury switch so that you've got engine light if you need to show the engine off at night. So inside the Land Cruiser, we've got some features. First of all, the uh, differential lockers are controlled by an original diff lock switch to the left of the steering wheel. And then we've got a kilometers per hour speedometer and fuel gauge and temperature gauge in dash. The engine monitoring is done by the Murphy gauge and uh, there you can get information from the engine with respect to coolant temperature, oil pressure, engine hours, and uh, trouble codes, lots of other features there. The rest of the dashboard consists of a Pioneer deck uh, with uh, Bluetooth capabilities and a CD player. A couple of six by nine speakers handle that sound behind the seats there. And we've got four switches for the light bars, front and rear, as well as the fuel transfer system. And then of course we can charge a couple of cell phones here with this built-in USB two amp port. The seats that I'm sitting on are the original 79 series seats. They're refinished in black perforated leather. And the floor is of course that two-part polyurea vortex that is such a durable surface. Uh, the floor on this vehicle can be washed out with a hose. There's four drain plugs you can pop out, wet rag, and the floor looks brand new again, even after it's completely trashed. All of this is designed to make this vehicle very usable and functional, easy to clean up after you get it dirty and having some fun. So we've added a rigid A-series light in place of the original interior dome light to provide a little bit more light. Super nice to have that kind of brightness in the vehicle so you can read maps during your nighttime adventures. So this truck was built for adventure and we've got a lot of adventure gear here on the back and I wanna show you this vehicle comes as is with all of this gear on it so it's just ready to go. First off, we've got a Snowmaster fridge freezer in the back. This unit has a freezer compartment on the left and a refrigerator on the right or both compartments can be a fridge or a freezer. To power the refrigerator, we've got a totally 12 volt dual battery system. The dual battery system in the back is portable and removable and that makes this truck even more functional. It integrates with the vehicle's electronic system and also charges via solar. The totally 12 volt system also powers the electrical accessories in the rooftop tent. The rooftop tent on this vehicle is unique. It's one of the first brought in to the United States by Sloop Imports and it is made by Camp King Industries in Brisbane, Australia. It's a hard shell aluminum rooftop tent and I believe that it is the finest on the market. The rack that's holding up the tent serves to hold a variety of off-road gear including a shovel and axe, a really nice pair of Max Trax Extreme traction devices and then there's Rotapax tanks for fuel, water and gear as well as a high lift jack and a fire extinguisher. So one thing that's important to mention about this truck is how incredibly difficult it is to build one like this. Uh, you can't see these around because they're not around. Uh, you have to acquire all of the parts and pieces from sometimes really hard to get places. And a lot of other vehicles went into building this. So there's a lot of hard to find stuff, very meticulously put together, and that's what makes this vehicle just as nice as it is. Let's look at what some industry professionals and some media outlets have had to say about this truck.
So thanks for watching this special Bring a Trailer episode of Prophets Resurrection Land Cruisers TV. If you are not familiar with our series, you can go to YouTube and there's lots of cool Land Cruiser content there under Prophets Resurrection Land Cruisers. Check us out on social media too, at Pro Cruiser on Instagram and Resurrection Land Cruisers on Facebook. And our website is resurrectionlandcruisers.com. Thanks for watching. Where's Bob when you need him? I've never had to detail a vehicle in the desert before. And it's a good thing there are other people here watching because they would be... What's that poser doing? I only do half the trail with a dirty vehicle and then I have to clean it to do the second half of the trail just because I don't want to be embarrassed with mud or spots. Anything more ridiculous than bringing a cordless blower to clean your vehicle on a trail? Oh, see, nap time, right? No. Come on. When we're shooting the video, Zach will be in here snoring. <laughs> Can you edit out the snoring? Or uh, just make it really loud. Just make this, you know. So it's just loud. Loud snoring, like. <laughs> <coughs> and Dave's gone from fabricator. To boom to man. Sound, to, to sound <laughs> to fabric man. Fabric, <laughs> fabric master. <laughs> fabricator. <laughs> fabric master. <laughs> These things are ridiculous. Can they make those things look not like animals? <laughs> <laughs>